show. Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon. Good morning. It's morning over there, right? Yeah. Good, uh, good evening, Will. How's it going? Good. Uh, I've had better days, but uh, I won't bore you guys with that. Good morning, Phil. Uh, Phil. Phil. Who the fuck's Phil? Good morning, <laughs> Figsy. How are you doing? I'm very well. Yourself? Uh, I'm like awesome for that. Yeah, like I said, I had better days. A shitty day at work, but uh, I'm off work. I'm at home, so things uh, things are looking up. I like the new um, headphones. They look good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I had to hide them from my daughter because you know you know how kids are. They they see what are you doing with that? That's mine. She wanted it back, so uh, I had to hide. It. She saw them, but uh, she's I got permission to use them. I only wish uh, I only wish they light up, but uh, and they see uh, you. <laughs> Yeah, they're broken <laughs> as kids do they break shit but yeah i'm probably gonna take these things off because they're too fucking tight so <laughs> excuse me yeah all right well so tonight we've got a very nostalgic episode we've got the original creator of the playstation 3 collectors group on facebook mr tj beam so please welcome tj to the podcast guys g'day tj how's it going how you going lads what's up what's up um yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on, lads. Uh, Will, nice to meet you. And Figsy, for the next, uh, I don't know, hour, you'll be uh, called uh, John Brown for nostalgia's sake. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that was. <laughs> was John Brown the alias you used to use when running the running the? Uh... Yeah, and he had. Uh, have you still, Figsy? Have you still got that um, that uh, photo that you used as the profile pic of that brown fucking shelf with your games on? <laughs> That that wasn't even that wasn't even my games. That's the funny part. <laughs> I just picked a random photo off Google. It wasn't even mine. Uh, it was like, who is this mysterious character, Fig John Brown? <laughs> we all knew it was a fake name, but we didn't know who he was. <laughs> uh, what, what, what was the rationale? What was the uh, thinking behind that? Fig uh, I deleted my Facebook back in 2012 2013 and then i i started buying video games and i wanted to buy off facebook marketplace like i don't want to use facebook again so i just made a random facebook as people do as, <laughs> one um, thing turned into another yeah as max from uh, uh mission impossible said anonymity is like a warm blanket <laughs> yeah. i have a fake account i forgot the password so it's just sitting there but uh you know uh, if you ever see Will Ford, that's me. A lot of guys back in the day had um, had fake accounts. I still TJ is not my real name, but some people know my real name. But I still use the fake account that I've always used. Yeah, and that works, you know. Facebook's yeah. Facebook. Facebook isn't real life. Bit of trivia <laughs> for you: T, TJ Beam is actually the character of a comic book me and a mate used to write at school that became uh, pretty popular in school that we used to release every week. <laughs> Nice. A week, a weekly comic. What was it about? Yeah, what, about TJ Beam and his uh, adventures in a small country town. <laughs> where, where? I know you're in Australia, but it's it's a pretty big country. Where, where exactly uh, are you? In the middle, the south, the north, the west? I live in uh, I live in Sydney, so the the central the central part of the east coast. Oh, Sydney! Big, I've heard of that place. <laughs> so, yeah. Cheers. So, TJ, yeah. for everyone that might not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, as far Well, I'll keep it on topic. So as far as gaming goes, um, I've ne- I, 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 I'll admit now I, I don't have no nostalgia for old consoles because I never played them. I grew up as an arcade boy. Uh, when I wasn't on the sporting field, I was in the arcade. One of my favourite games to this day is a game called Rygar. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Rygar, the original um, arcade game. I've heard of it, but I can't picture it. I, it's like I, a side-scrolling I, Conan the Barbarian rip-off, but one of I my favourite games. I um, and it. I never got into console gaming. Oh, we had Sega and, and Pong, but I never got into console gaming until vaguely the PS1. Um, played Tenchu. Played um, a lot of sports games, a lot of racing games. I know Will's a fan of Tenchu. It's one of my favourite games of all time, by the oh, way. It, it, yeah, it's it's you can't beat it. They need to bring it back. Well, actually, yeah, they I, seriously I, need to do a remaster. Um, but uh, I, my sort of gaming back then was we played a lot of sports games. My brother and brother-in-law and I. In fact, the day 
the day my niece was brought home from hospital, she was uh, in her pram and the family was around oogling the baby and they're videotaping it and all you can hear is me and my brother-in-law arguing, uh, playing Lomu. <laughs> Uh, we still <laughs> so, but um, I never got into console gaming seriously until PS2. My brother and I bought that uh, on day one um, in a pack with a bag and a bunch of games and shit, spent a fortune on it. And um, I just remained a gamer right up until the end of um, I, I played Skyrim, put a thousand hours into Skyrim on console on the PS3. Which, if anyone's played that on PS3, you know that's a bit of an effort because it's a fucking dog of a game on PS3. It's so glitchy. <laughs> um, but collecting-wise, I, I was a big PS2 collector. Uh, had a good collection. Had some really random, rare items on the PS2. But it was the PlayStation Collector Group on Facebook, um, the one that uh, the guy of Hancock's created. They got me out of yeah, PS2 PFYG, because... I think it's called. The P PSCG, Police PlayStation yeah, Collector it. Group. Yeah, it's and like they UK got me out of group. PS2 because I used to see the collections on there. Those guys are complete nuts on that group. And around the same time, that was, um, I, I guess, 2011 that I started collecting for PS3 because no one was really collecting for it then. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just – I already had a bit of a collection because I I didn't buy PS3 day one, but I bought it very early because my very first game was – I still remember the day was Legends of WrestleMania I bought brand new. <laughs> um, and because, look, honestly, um, my, my brother-in-law, our gaming career consisted of creating characters and um, having computer matches on wrestling, boxing, football, cricket, you name it. That was like what we did. We just loved it. So um, when PS3 came out and I bought that Legends of WrestleMania, I was like, I went over and showed him. I was like, check this shit out, dude. They look like real people. <laughs> they look like real people back then. Um, but I'd already had a, a, a collection going. I maybe had 40 games that because I, I bought games to play and then just never threw them out. Or never, not throw them out, but never... Um, uh, traded, traded them or sold them, just kept them around. And, yeah, no one was collecting for the PS3 that I knew of, not publicly anyway. There's probably guys out there going, oh, I was collecting since 2007. But no one was, like, openly saying, hey, I've got a collection of PS3 going. And I jumped on Facebook and, like figs, I was sort of wanting to get into PS3 via Facebook because I'd already been on the the uh, PS2 site or the collector's group. And I remember, do you remember the, do you remember the first time we met Figs of the games that we traded? I remember our first trade, but I can't remember our first meeting. I th well, that was pretty, pretty early. Like we might've met once or twice, but our first trade was one of our first interactions. And it was, yeah, it was... I think you sent me, um, was it the Simpsons? Oh, I'm thinking of a different trade. I thought it was Captain America for 3D Dot Game Heroes, but maybe oh, I guess that's what it was. Yeah, Captain America for 3D Dot Game Heroes, and yeah, we so we um, traded, uh, and then we just sort of over a couple of months became friends, started talking about the PS3 library and what was out there, and we really had no idea. We were such noobs on the PS3. We were still learning, and Figs and I said, I remember Figs suggested, he said, we should make a collector's group like the other ones, but for PS3. And I said, yeah, that's a, um, that's a, uh, a <laughs> Mark just commented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Marky Mark, I got ripped off with a lot of fucking trades, bro. <laughs> um, but uh, um, also that was the early days. I think Captain America was quite a rare game back then. <laughs> Yeah, I think back then they were both forty dollar games. Not today. yeah, exactly. Um, so we created the group. I remember um, I was just leaving for work, so I said to Figs, "You do it," and because I, I also don't know much about about Facebook, so I said, "You collect, you create the group, and we'll see where it goes." 
And I remember to the day, do you remember the first three members? I remember some of the first 10 members, like Reggie coming in and Mike being there. And no, Reggie I was later. I'll tell you the first three members, and, I, and I'm pretty sure this was in order. I could be wrong, but the first member, and I remember because I got a notification on the way to work the day you created it, was um, Matt Murphy. He was number yep. one. And then there was um, Miguel Ruiz was yep. like number two. Closely followed, I'm saying, by minutes by Jimmy Dean Wilson. So they were like one, two, three. I still remember them joining. And I was like, oh, shit, there's other people out there that are into PS3 collecting. And then the group, like, didn't explode, but it became really popular. We were just getting request after request after request. and But there were genuine um, collectors jumping in. And everyone who joined was sharing their collection and talking. And I, I remember... I was a bit of a Nazi back in the day because I, I kicked a lot of people out in the early days because, Will, I don't know you, I don't know how you run your site but or your group, but um, I was sick of – I just wanted to learn about PS3 because we didn't have any idea. It wasn't like today. We had no idea about the library. Like, we didn't know – like I was chatting there before, we'd find a game like that uh, supermodel game and we'd be like, what? the hell is this i didn't and it's all common knowledge now but when we first started collecting we didn't know about this shit so it was all very exciting and i didn't want to waste my time with ps2 and ps1 because i already knew a lot of the a lot about that so i had this rule that if you were a member of the group and you posted on the group it was only ps3 it's strictly ps3 oh, so yes. i remember one guy particularly he put a photo up and he's like, "Oh, thanks for the th thanks for the ad. Um, here's my latest PS3 pickups." And he had four PS2 games, a PS1 game, and two PS3 games. And I fucking booted him. I was like, "Mate, <laughs> rules are rules, you know. I just I don't care about the other consoles. I just care and I just care about PS3 and I want to learn about the library. So I don't want. I didn't boot him straight away after that. He became a smart ass and put up a." photo of a PS3 game with the corner of a PS2 there. And he's like, is this all right? And I'm like, nah, see ya. <laughs> no, man. And, uh, if, you post, uh, if you post a stack of games and there's some PS2 or PS3 in there, as long as it's more than 50% PS3, We'll let we'll let it we'll let it stand. But if it's uh if it's seven PS2 games and three PS3 games, yeah, we're 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 kicking that shit out. We're uh we're pretty strict about that as well. Yeah, and I wasn't being a, a prick about it. I just it was to me it was about learning. And back then, um, the collectors we weren't interested in trading to build our collections and and shit like that. It was literally about learning about the system. And I remember. Like, do you remember, Figs, I used to have a monthly theme? I'd run a monthly theme. Yeah, so, yeah I remember those. They were great. Yeah, so it, for... Um, it, for I instance, played so many games in those monthly themes. I used to play one game a day and talk about it. Yeah, and so in October, we'd, I'd say to them, hey, guys and girls, let's um, post up our collections of horror games. And it was a really good way because every now and then someone would go, oh, here's my horror collection, and it'd be 12 games, and then you'd see a game that you'd never heard of before. And so... That was a really good way to learn about the the uh, the library, and we'd all add those games to our database of of, of the PS3 library. I'm, I, I used to make um, I used to make uh, PS3 trophies, and everyone that got involved in the monthly themes, I'd give a trophy to on the on the page, and people would be like, "Oh, I got the latest trophy and shit." It was really, it was a lot of fun back then. I remember that. That was fun. Yeah, and that was the way that we got we got our knowledge on the PS3 group uh, so on the what? PS3 library was that like building the knowledge and the, and we just all connected as friends as well. It wasn't, I'm not saying that doesn't happen now, but when it was happening, it was just a, we were becoming friends rather than just contacts to learn the library. Like we're generally talking to each other off the group. So how, uh, when, uh, when the, when you guys started the group was, uh, was it was a PS4 on the scene? What, what year was this? 2014, I think. 15, when the PS 14, yeah, around then. End of 14, uh, start of 15, yeah. When the PS4 so the PS4 had just come out, so people weren't really focused on the PS3 at that stage. But also, as I said, we didn't – there was no knowledge on the PS3. 
And it was that was the exciting part was learning about you'd have someone post a game that you just didn't know about, and you're all excited going, "Oh, I'm going to put that on my list and go looking for it." You know. I'm looking. At, I'm on, I'm on the group right now. You're no longer you're no longer in the group, uh, TJ. No, I, I I left. I got um, I got booted. I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think you left yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I because well when I left, I I, I gave up. Um, I, I just it didn't become about it was different. It changed. It wasn't about. I loved the learning and the the uh, networking and stuff like that and. Eventually, it was just like there were there were too many people posting Crap. just random shit that I didn't really care about anymore. Like the glory days of the group was over for me, and I was <laughs> thinking about selling up the collection. And yeah, I just said, "Look, lads, I love his all, but I'm going to leave his." Oh man, that's no one had an issue with it. I don't think <laughs> my my heart's breaking over here, and I wasn't even in the group. In those actually, days. I do remember one. Do you remember that? I don't know. He's, I'll I'll keep him nameless, but there was one guy that was like good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I know who you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, want to get yeah, a photo yeah. up of your um, PS3 collection, TJ. So um, I hope we don't get any tears here. You might have to pull the tissues out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're all there. I think they're all rarities too. I didn't have a lot of common stuff. I uh, don't have any more photos of like your wall or anything, but I know you had a massive wall of. Um, Oh, here we go. Like collector's editions and stuff. So this is um, my hand in your game room. That's the sealed <laughs> Ra 1, by the way. Wow. And a sealed Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yeah, and believe, Africa, I'll tell you a story. And um, I think he's in the chat, um, Joe, collector fanatic. <laughs> that Africa, if you watch a video of um, Joe's where he picks up the Africa, he gets Africa delivered. He bought it off uh, Amazon. On that was sealed. I was watching the, that exact same game for like four months, and the week I planned to buy it, he puts up that video. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Fuck!" Four months I watched it for, I didn't buy it. And then I wanted to buy it, and Joe uh, jumped in and grabbed it before me. Half his life. Just one. It was Only on one? Amazon. It was a random, um, just Her a random on listing on Amazon for a, 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 a Africa, and I don't even think it said sealed. I think it didn't stay to it, but the photo looked sealed. And I was watching it forever and ever. And then, yeah, eventually I sort of said, oh, no, this is it, I'm, I'm buying it. And I went there and it was gone. And then a week later, Joe posts his uh, collection video. And he's like, look what I got on Amazon. <laughs> I think I uh, ended up trading you my copy of Africa for a copy of RA1 later on down the line. I believe so, yeah. I don't think I found that. Um, I think, yeah, I think I traded that with you. Pixie, Which today... Would be a um, me getting ripped off because Africa is more expensive than RA one. <laughs> oh, really? Is it so? Yeah. Africa still because I know nothing about the current theme, scene of of PS three. Is is Africa still sort of one of the well? Uh, top sir, yeah. of... Yes, uh, certain uh, recent. Uh... What sort of looking for recent events have uh, I believe is going to push Africa to the top of the uh, North American collecting? Uh, it's going to be the rare one for the North Co North American collectors because those other two turds got uh, reprinted. And uh, from last did... memory, it was a free four hundred US dollar game. It's probably even more expensive today. I think Joe paid. I, I could be wrong. I think it was sixty US on Amazon for a sealed Africa. And I couldn't justify the sixty dollars US at the time. <laughs> uh, yeah. I turned yeah. down a sixty dollars sealed copy of Marvel vs. Capcom two, and bought a thirty dollars used one because why would I pay thirty dollars for a piece of plastic? And now it's a two hundred dollars game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, one of my first. That was one of my first big hitters I ever bought was Marvel vs. Capcom two. Yep. If uh, video game collectors had a time machine, they wouldn't go back and stop Hitler. They would go back and shop on Amazon for real cheap. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, and um, and the other thing about the thing I loved about back then with when when we met each other, we'd never met in person. We, that's right, with free shipping. Yeah, <laughs> to to the US, and I and I'm to this day I'm still going to say that's the only thing that stopped me buying it. Joe was. I couldn't get free shipping to Australia. 
Um, but the the one the thing I also another thing I loved about the old days, and hopefully it's still the same, is that you could um, you could have a collector that uh, I'm trying to think of a good example because there's literally every example. Um, but the the Louis in Brazil is a good example. Back in the day, the core group of collectors you could never meet anyone, but if you found Say you found a sealed copy of Africa on a random website, you could say to a collector from the group, hey, I want to buy this. Can I send it to your place? They would say 100% send it. They wouldn't say no and then go and buy it themselves. Like they were all about helping each other. If someone found a really good deal, they'd do whatever it took to get to let you, like, score that deal there'd be no undercutting or anything like that it was all like let's just help out each other whoever whoever finds a deal we're we're going to help out to make sure that person gets that deal and these are people you've never met in in real life that were willing to do this it blew my mind that there were guys out there that were that nice i used to uh uh james johnson and ricky andre i used to share with them the uh the local finds that you know that i wasn't going to pick up hey man check this shit out check this shit out I'm like oh crap after they uh you know and i go pick them up for them but after about the fourth or fifth time i quit sharing shit with them because i don't want to run across town to pick that up for them. i don't know if you saw us last week but uh last uh, last week we were talking about you know people hit me up uh it's <laughs> We're not that tight knit over PS3 ain't dead, uh, but because we're we're it's it's a little bigger, but uh, yeah, the camaraderie it, it's there. I get it amongst collectors, and it's a it's a good thing. And yeah, sometimes... awesome. Because honestly, I've been a member of of collector groups that aren't gaming, and that camaraderie doesn't exist in other in other collectors groups. I can guarantee you that. Like, there's no trust there with other with other groups. I'm not saying every other group, but there are groups out there. There's no trust and no none of that stuff that happened. So it, it used to be the, and just the fact that it was just, these are guys that we just never met before. We'd only just met online and they were still willing to help you out. I think it might've come down to um, people were observing us doing all these trades and they almost like FOMO, they didn't want to miss out. Hey, I'm in a country that you guys don't have anyone to trade with. Do you want to get involved with me? And there was plenty of people like that. Like we met someone from Spain doing that. We met, Mark from South Africa because he's like, hey guys, I'm from South Africa. Do you need some help getting these games? And yeah, or email from uh, Sweden. You know, he, yeah. he. I remember he jumped on and said, anyone wants the Swedish SingStar, I can get it super cheap. Never made money off people. If it cost him five dollars, five euros to buy, that's what he'd sell you, sell it to you for. You know what I mean? Like there was no. Well, it's costing me five euro, but I've got to go down there in a bus, so you need to give me the bus fare. So how about I just charge you seven euro? You know what I mean? Like it was just like, nah, it's five euro. I'll go and get it for you, sweet ass. Yeah. And yeah, it was that sort of stuff that just and um, it actually made you want to sort of um, go home and, and jump on the group and and have a chat with people and and socialize on the group. Yeah, in, in a way, you know what I mean? Like it was like, oh, I'm finishing work. I'm going home to jump on the group and see what new games are out there or see what people have posted. I remember we used to get excited when someone would join from a different country that we hadn't had a group member from. And 100%. Someone from Mexico 100%. would join and we'd all get really excited in the comments. And everyone Cuba would from, be like, if you need someone to trade with, I'm over here. And this Yeah, when Cuba from uh, Poland uh, joined, it was like big news because Poland was notorious for having some really random obscure uh uh exclusive so when kuba joined we're all like awesome now we've got a polish guy but um yeah but as i said it, it wasn't it, it to me personally it even wasn't um like like if if kuba joined from poland it, what to me it wasn't like the oh great i've got a polish contacts for the polish exclusives now it was like oh i get to meet someone from another country and befriend them and find out all about them and i'm still friends with kuba i still talk to him every now and then and you know what to go even further kuba even got i i had i found some uh because for anyone doesn't know or i tell them now i, I collect I, I i'm still a collector i collect um 
die-cast Jeeps in 164 scale. There's some of them. Um, and I found, because once a collector, always a collector. Am I right, Will? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's in the blood. And I found some really obscure, rare uh, uh, um, majorette Jeeps. And I sent them, Cooper was like, yeah, sweet, send them to, uh, so I sent them to his address. And he'll in turn send them to um, John Cox in uh, the UK. Shout out to JC. Uh, bro, pick up your puppy. I've still got your shit in, in my house. <laughs> Um, actually, he still sends games. I don't have anything to do with gaming except John Cox will send a random game to my place because he's got my postal address. You know <laughs> what I mean? So the love's still there. But, yeah, Cooper said, yeah, send these toy cars to my place and I'll in turn send them to John in the UK and then he'll in turn – he's got some cars of mine and he'll in turn send them to me. So from the early days of me and Figs trading a game and then saying – Let's start a collector group. Eight, nine years later, it's like, can I send a toy car to your place in Poland, Coops? <laughs> and that's, that's the best part about it. it it's not, yeah. you didn't make a contact, you know, you made a friend across A friend, the exactly. It wasn't a contact, it was a friend. And even guys that I don't talk to that much anymore, like uh, Miguel in America, he's a football and baseball nut from Cleveland. And he loves it, which is right up my alley because I, I, I'm a bit of a diehard um, US sports fan myself. So we'll like each other's posts on Facebook when it comes to, especially because I'm a Bengals fan. So we're both in the Cleveland um, area. So we'll sort of rib each other a little bit on the, on the football scene and stuff like that. So even guys I don't talk to on a regular basis, I still contact with through various interactions on Facebook, you know. You need to come back to the Facebook, TJ. I just... <laughs> it's what? too late to start collecting. Maybe yeah. I'll go in there just to sort of say hello to everyone and talk to people and meet some of the new collectors. I found uh, last week's episode really interesting. The young bloke was on last week. Um, Tristan. Tristan, yeah, because he, he, he reminded me a lot of me back in the day because I was sort of known as someone that used to collect really obscure stuff i'd stuff yeah, that was just a, i never and concentrated Tristan really gets into the um getting out there meeting people making contacts you know i'll get you something you get me something yeah and and, and i wasn't yeah, into the common i wasn't into the common collection um you know I, I didn't bother collecting the sports titles except if a sports title, like for instance, the Madden. I can't, and forgive me, I can't remember the, which Madden it was, but it had the, the Madden and Espanol. Yeah, yeah. That's and I saw that, and I was like, "Well, that's a Madden game that I can have in my collection because it's bizarre, and it's weird, and it's a different variant." Do you pull yours out, Figsy? Yeah, there's it's some of my collection it. of the uh, PS3 uh, accessories, keyboard and soundbar earpiece and they're all like official black label ps3 stuff so that i sort of concentrated on that sort of stuff <laughs> got a photo of your ps2 collection it's my ps2 uh vr unit no one hardly anyone knows that that even exists yeah i've seen those so you still got that thing no i um i sold it to um chris chris How was it was a uh... Were there games made for that specifically, or is it just any game? There was there was five games, and I'll use air quotes for games because one of them was a um, a mech mech simulator. Yeah. One of them was, I think, I could be wrong. the The other game was a flight simulator, and then three of them were actual live concerts that you could sit in the audience and watch. A oh, Japanese concert. <laughs> all right, so there's, uh, all, you, you had a Japanese console, I take it, or did you have your... Uh, ja yeah, Japanese, and it was legit VR. It wasn't like um, dual screen or or um, like the them Sony Glastrons or anything like that. Like, it was a legit attempt at virtual reality, and it was really obscure and bizarre, but it, it just never took off because um, PlayStation Japan never, ever pushed it was never pushed as a product. It was just released. No one knew about it. It sold poorly and just disappeared into obscurity. Yeah, it sounds like the Vita. 
<laughs> yeah, the Vita's big, the, the Vita's big brother. Uh, TJ, I just had another photo. It's not PlayStation related, but it was really cool that you sent me. It was this Nakakami right, so, Plaza Die Hard collection. Do you want to um, you, you put this, you let the cat out of the bag? But so I'll, I'll tell them things. We were going to um, make a bit of a theme for the podcast on what do we decide on figs the the question for everyone um was it so it was basically what if if anyone in the chat what's your favorite memory of collecting and it's relevant to today so anyone that's still collecting today on on will's group or the ps3 group what you know what's what's a really good memory that you've got of collecting and that Nakatomi Plaza um, is actually my favourite memory because uh, I had a trade with Ben, Benny Nurback over in the States and I sent him something that he didn't know and, yeah, he sent me that um, as a reward for something I, I sent him and it was the, it's still to this day the most awesome thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm, I'm not a movie collector, but I want that. That's amazing. <laughs> it's, I'm a diehard, diehard fan. So I watch Die Hard every Christmas. Die Hard, uh, not a Christmas all the movie. way, and Gremlins. Every Christmas, they're the three that I watch. And so you, um, Are you one of those who argues for Die Hard is a Christmas movie, or is it just a movie that takes place at Christmas? It's the Christmas movie. <laughs> it's just a movie I watch at Christmas because it's, a, it's something I've always done. <laughs> Because it ends with it ends with Christmas music and it's an awesome movie. <laughs> um, motherfucker. But yeah, so he he actually bought that for himself and uh, end up sending it over to me. So um, it was just an awesome experience. Another and also another experience. One of one of my favourite experiences from the whole group was I went to Melbourne to buy my PS. I've got a PS3 kiosk for sale. If anyone wants it. Um, <laughs> And uh, I went to Melbourne to pick it up. And on the way back, I'd organised to buy some games off uh, Kieran, Kieran O'Hara. And um, so I dropped into his place. And like buying uh, games off Facebook or, or, or Gumtree, which is like um, Craigslist. Craigslist for you guys, I expected just to sort of knock on his door and he'd bring out the games and go, oh, yeah, there you go. Good to see you. The dude invited me into his house, went through his collection, made me – we sat down and had a couple of cups of coffee, talked about collecting, talked about the old days of PS2, talked about our history. I was in there for like an hour and a half talking to him about almost nothing else and we, we weren't just talking about – um gaming and I walked out of there and I just thought what just happened like it, it, that's the sort of love that all us collectors had for each other you could rock up to a member's house he had never met before you sure you talked to him on chat yeah, yeah. but he didn't have to invite me into his home like that but no come in sit down let's have a coffee let's talk we chatted for an hour and a half and I just drove away from there thinking that's one of the best things that's ever happened to me in the collectors group I can I can give highlights like um uh, finding my sealed Ra one shout out to Tanzan, the OG um, collecting ghost that no one knows, but he's one of the biggest collectors I've ever seen. Um, uh, the, the highlight the first time I met Figs because it led to the PS3 collector group. But shit like what Kieran done was all, really, really awesome as far as I'm concerned. You just don't get that in other walks of life. Shit's cool, man. I think we sold your kiosk for you. Uh, Jimmy Dean Wilson's asking how much do you want for the kiosk? <laughs> be a long Dean. drive. I certainly <laughs> won't be giving it uh, for Jimmy Dean prices, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do end up selling it, don't I'm forget. I've given you uh, enough, Jimmy Dean. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget our cut, our commission here over here at uh, <laughs> PlayStation Collectors Podcast. Yeah. And hundred percent, TJ. Like I can say, I fly down to Sydney, and um, you gave me the same treatment that um, Kieran gave you. You picked me up from the airport, took me to your place, showed me your collection. Uh, we hung out for a couple of hours, and then you took me to my accommodation. And and, and um, the, the the great thing about that, the thing that I'm most proud about that day is, 
that's probably the only time in history that Figsy's been jealous of someone's collection. <laughs> <laughs> because at that stage, I was still on par with Figsy as far as content and uh, the size. And I think he walked away from there going, fuck this guy, I'm going to... I'm going to destroy him now. And he just oh, went hard on collecting and yeah. just blew up. <laughs> at the peak, yeah. how big was your collection, TJ? Uh, it, probably at the, um, at the peak, I think I had about 1,300 games, but I didn't have a lot of sport, a lot of shovelware. It was, I yeah, yeah. honestly had a lot of um, just collectible stuff that I wanted to collect. And, and it only grew bigger when I decided that um, – so there was Figsy, or sorry, John Brown, um, Evan, uh, Evan Daniels, um, Sean Black, shout out to Shawnee, and Nico Webb. And I think that's it. We had a, and myself, we had a, a Oz Powell um, group chat going because we were finding um, all these weird sort of Oz Powell. Um, and we wanted to know what consisted of the Ozpal library. So, and it was around that time I decided that I was going to go for the complete Ozpal set, which was ironic because because it was also around that time that I realised this is a fool's errand on my part. I just it's, it's just too much to go for, and it's too obscure, and it's just a rabbit hole I don't want to try and dig myself out of. Well, that's the uh, that's the thing. I mean, when you're uh, when you got. Uh the camaraderie you talk about you push each other i mean oh shit you found it well shit now i gotta go out and i gotta up this guy and uh and then oh shit you found it and then yeah, and, and you compete and you push each other and uh it's a good thing to have i'm sorry those uh those glory days are gone for you but uh we all you always have your memories I mean, great 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 that, too, but... um little oz power collecting messenger group still alive today oh really <laughs> <They're> still <laughs> helping each other out getting games I should rejoin it just for uh, old time's sake. Yeah, hundred percent. I just I remember seeing, um, and you know, you got to remember this. This is still back in the day when we were still kind. We knew the library. We were still kind of learning, and people are probably looking at me going, "Oh, that's just they're just common stuff. It's all common knowledge now." But um, I remember Sean Black uh, <laughs> showed a photo of the. Um, so there was like, I think last time I saw there was five or six games that were reprinted from the old logo to the new one. Do you know what I'm talking about, Fix? Yeah, like the black the, and the red spine. The black and the red logo. And, um, and yeah, we had like four of them and then Sean came in and went boom and put out like three more and I was like, well, fuck you, Sean, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you something about Sean Black. He's the biggest PS3 collecting ghost you've ever met. That guy has got shit that um, will make most collectors jealous. The guy's a machine. Wanna, for I don't want to talk about what he's got because I don't want people to know about it. <laughs> yeah, he's a machine for finding shit. He just finds shit that you're just like, yeah, okay, whatever, mate. <laughs> Figs, are you waiting yeah, for the I'd guy like to... give you some credit for um, starting a trend that a lot of people have jumped on, and that's Sorry, the, what's that, Sing Star, the Sing Star games. I'd like to give you credit for starting that. The Sing Star... So... I found a copy of Singstar uh, Afrikaans before the group had even started. I randomly got on Google, found it at a South African game shop, emailed them and said, hey, do you ship to Australia? And he's like, what the hell? I guess so. Sent it to me thinking that that was the only international Singstar available. <laughs> That's how early it was. Like, I had no idea there was like however many there turned out to be. But when I found out and then I started collecting for them and I had a bit of a collection going and then Figsy and, and Kev over in the UK decided, they announced, oh, hey, look, I'm going for the complete PS3 SingStar set. I was like, I'm out because those guys are lunatics. There's no way I'm going <laughs> to. I was just like, I'm out. I'm not competing with Kev because he's just over the top. He was crazy on, uh, on he was crazier on variants than I was back in the day. Awesome bloke, but just him and Figsy just yeah. took the ball and just ran with it. It um, hurt my wallet for a couple of years, that's sure. I'm sure I'll, Kev's I'll bet. I'll bet. The same I got way. close. I think I got within, I don't know, five, five or six of the complete set. What's uh, tell, tell us, wh wh how many are in the set? How many are in the PAL? Or the... 
I think there's 48 sing star games in the set, and then what? if you're talking variants, it's up to like 80 plus. Yeah, that's so crazy. It's crazy. You sold your sing star set. What did you sell that for? Do you remember? I, I sold it, but not as a set. I, I gave it to, uh, and that went all around the world to people who needed it. Okay. Yeah. So it, it just basically went over, um, over time, bit by bit. Some to Australia, some overseas. Um, yeah. So tell us about how you sold your collection. When did that occur? Um, have you got any regrets from when that happened? And what did you do with the money, if you don't mind sharing? Well, I sold the collection to finance um, the Jeep. Uh, I, I, I wanted to upgrade, upgrade my Jeep, so I sold um, their shares. Uh, and it's an even bigger money pit than video game collecting. <laughs> um, but... I just got burnt out with collecting. It was it was just becoming too much of a rabbit hole. I was, and I knowing the sort of collector I am, I, I was just like, I'm going to go broke with this shit because I've got OCD bad. And I just, if there was the slightest variant on something, I'd be just like, I'd be awake at night going, how am I going to buy that? Where am I going to find it? You know what I mean? Like just going crazy. And so I made the decision I've got to, it's, it's either all or nothing. I had to stop. I told Figsy I'm thinking about selling my um, collection. Probably going to. I, I don't. I don't want to do it in one hit. Um, and because I wanted my collection, I specifically targeted collectors to sell it to because I wanted it. I wanted my collection to go to fellow collectors. I wanted to sort of finally give back and say, you know, I don't want someone to resell this shit. I want to send it to somewhere that's going to appreciate the collection so i probably in hindsight sold it for 30 percent of what it's worth but i was happy with the money i got because it literally went towards buying that jeep um little did i know that that jeep would cost me four times more than what i bought it for just to upgrade it but um um yeah so i i just sold it bit by bit i went through all i pulled out all of the the top tier stuff and then all the middle tier stuff and then all the shovelware and, and that sort of stuff. I, sh- I sold and, – and so I, I, I think I'm I, – I'm, I can't remember. I may have made a group or I may have just messaged individual, but I messaged the core group of the collectors that I knew wanted stuff. And I said, this is – this okay, this is the top tier stuff. Who wants what? And they all sort of rustled around and – pinned each other for three and worked out which who gets what and like there was stuff like um uh, i remember evan i'm pretty sure evan got my guardian my sealed guardians of middle earth because that was one of the last um that was one of the hard ones that he was looking for to complete his set and i i think yep. figs and he's now um, got a complete set yeah so. yeah and he's another guy that's a bit of a ghost that had a, had an amazing collection that just didn't get out there and go look at this you know, he, he just – he had some really cool stuff but just never sort of promoted I'm it. Proudly I proudly got to see that collection in real life. and it's Yeah, yeah. That's like, like the I'm day jealous. I went to your house, I left very jealous that day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, and you know, there were, I, had a, I had a large um, – at one stage I was right at the end of my collecting days, my focus was slip covers. So I was starting to build a, a collection of really – unusual slip covers like i found the uh i don't know if you could if, if it's handy figs but the the cowboy one with the bullet belt um i can't remember what it, um call of juarez or something and that was like the kind of the uh the white whale for there this is um is, and that's like that a little s- fold out bullet belt and really hard to find but i found that and i, I focused that- on the slip covers is that the and same most one? Most of them, thankfully, went to Figs because um, I knew he was sort of – he took up the, the mantle for collecting for, for slip covers, and he was a slip covers fan and he appreciated the slip covers. Um, yeah, so it just it. sort of went all around the world. And then, um, thankfully, to, to my luck, uh, uh, another member – I'm not going to mention his name in case he doesn't want – but another member, basically, uh, I was chatting to him and he said, what have you got? left and i took everything i had left 
and I drove to a location to meet him and I said, here it is. I gave it to him all and he said, give me a week and I'll come back with a price. I'm like, beautiful. A week later, he came back with a price. I said, yep, sounds fair. It was a good middle-of-the-range price and he bought the rest of the collection and, and just got it off my hands in one in one big hit, which was awesome. Um, so... And then that was the end. And all I've got left is uh, the kiosk. I have um, a couple of Olympic variants. And I won't say which ones because I'm not sure if I do still have them. But if I do, I'll let someone know. And I've also got, I'm going to be making, I'm planning on making a, a video on a certain PS3 topic that's always fascinated me and I've, I just need two more games. So I'll actually be buying two games. I'll be delving back into the rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> they're very common games to buy, but so um, yeah, I'll be making a video on that sort of um, it's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in the PS3 collecting. So if you're interested, I'll let Figs know and he can let you know when I put the video up, but um, yeah, that's it. I, it's all I've got left now. As a speaking of video, so you've got a YouTube channel, TJ. Um, I do. I, 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 do over there. I'm not going. I don't want to promote it on here because it's got nothing to do with gaming. But I basically go around and document famous graves, stuff like that. Wow. Yes. I personally find it interesting. So if you guys do want to check it out, it is TJ Beam <laughs> over on YouTube. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I just uh, I just find it interesting. I, I remember. Um, I took mum. I took my mum on Mother's Day to a cemetery and to see a relative. And while I was there, I came across the grave of Dally Messenger, who, for anyone that's not Australian, is an extremely famous, the greatest of all time in rugby league. And I couldn't believe that someone that famous was like, "Oh, look, he's right there," and it just sparked this interest in uh, celebrity graves. And I just go around and document that. So it's more. It's there's more people interested than what you think in it, but. But um, yeah, but I, I, I do have, uh, I've also got a notorious um, playthrough of Ra One, which <laughs> it's not me commenting, it's just a straight uh, video capture playthrough. But if anyone's keen to watch that, it's, it's a bit of a, if you want to torture yourself without physical harm, um, yeah, head over and spend the next 18 minutes watching that atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you're going to have to pardon me for a few minutes. Uh, I'll be right back. No worries, bro. Yeah, you're right, Will. Uh, so I just had one more photo to bring up here, and that is um, what you're doing these days. So. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a truck driver. That's 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 the beast, the Western Star. So I drive up and down the East Coast hauling, hauling ass burnt and blowing black smoke. Nice. I love it. You like your job? I do like my job. Um, I actually... Uh, a lot of times I'll, because I it's got a sleeper and I'll be away overnight and I'll put the iPad. It's got a little shelf in the in the back in the in the sleeper cab and I'll sit the iPad up there and maybe watch a Figsy's podcast or pick up video or something for a bit of entertainment on the on the side of the road. It's good. It's good fun. Uh, so you um, were mentioning the Matchbox cars. So that's mainly your focus these days. Uh, I don't. I, I've, I've, I've given up a kind of a little bit um, or slowed down because it's funny. I'm in a, a similar group to our PS3 PAL um, exclusive messenger group. And it's basically a Jeep. So I collect Jeeps, uh, diecast Jeeps. So 164, 172nd, that sort of stuff. And um, I'm in a group with a couple other collectors and we worked out, um, that I'm, we're pretty sure I've got the biggest collection in the world, which is like over 400 fucking Jeep, diecast Jeeps, which when I got into it, I thought, yeah, maybe 100 would be, be all good, but I'm up over 400 now. So, but I've slowed down a little bit, but I still, um, yeah, I still collect, I collect Jeep merchandise too. I've got a Jeep radio and random old Jeep stuff. Um, oh. But yeah, as I said, once a collector, always a collector. You, you can't get it out of your blood. You've got to, You've got to have something to brighten your day when the mailman comes, do you? Yeah, a hundred percent, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure people aren't surprised hearing, "Oh, you might have the biggest Jeep collection in the entire world." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't slow down too much. <laughs> Jimmy's still commenting on the kiosk. <laughs> 
I'll yeah, Jimmy really wants that key off, so he's going to be um, <laughs> doing a trip up to Sydney or trip down south soon. <laughs> yeah, buy, buy, a pay, buy a pay shipping. Well, we do have some NRL fans in chat, so Chaos is saying he's an NRL fan. Uh, if I could suggest a grave, I would love to hear a story about Clive Churchill's grave. I can't. Um, it's it's not. Um, unfortunately, he was cremated, and the family kept his ashes okay. private, so I can't find him. I know he had one of the biggest funerals that Sydney's ever seen. He, and... he did, yeah. And, and I'm a South fan, so um, you know he's a little master. He is the greatest of all time. I, I would have loved to visit, um, but unfortunately, I, his family sort of. Uh, I. Uh, Put, I don't. They, they don't know where they. I suppose so in private, I guess. Yeah, it's a lot of them are. Um, yeah. Um. So you're probably not gaming at the moment, TJ. But have you played anything recently? Uh. I know we were talking time... a while ago about V8 supercars. Oh, I was. I did. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I did get back into. Um... <laughs> I bought a PS2 and got back into uh, – I bought – did I buy them off you, Fix? I can't remember. I think I might have helped you, but – Yeah, we but I bought, yeah, the, the, old PS, the old PS2 V8 supercar um, games uh, and got back into that um, very, very briefly. But as I said, um, I put over a 1,000 hours into Skyrim on the PS3. I put – um, the best the best gaming experience I've ever had in my life, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, is Red Dead Online, the, the first Red Dead Redemption Online. Um, yep. Me and my brother, the way they had that set up, um, it was just such an awesome experience that these days after that and Skyrim, I was just like, uh, I, I can't, it just burnt me out. I was just like, I remember, um, so Joe said that, um, he felt like the Demon Souls or the Souls games kind of ruined him for gaming because uh, he now sort of any game that comes out, there's just an automatic um, uh, automatic um, what's the word uh, comparison to Souls games, and if it's not as good as a Souls game, then that. it's like ah, I don't want to play this anymore. And, and I, I do struggle to get into RPGs these days that are yeah. similar to Dark Souls because I'm a Souls fan. So yeah, and and I was similar to and I don't I've never played the Souls game, and, but I was very similar to um, Red Dead and Skyrim. Although I I've, I've been a, a Elder Scrolls fan since the first game. I played that on PC because I went through a period where I was a PC gamer. After I went from arcades into PC because most of the arcade games started to become available on PC. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to go and spend 20 cents a credit on Rygar when I can play it on my, you know, Amiga or Amstrad or Commodore 64 or whatever. Yeah, like um, I get that. Sorry? Yeah, I completely get that. Yeah. But I, I, I was playing arcades when Street Fighter 2 came out, when Mortal Kombat came out. You know, we were all huddled around the video store, huddled around the the arcade machine when that sort of stuff. We had our coins up there. Yeah, I'm the next challenger. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah, my yeah. 20 cents on the thing. I'm up next. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It was wait a minute, that, wait a minute. that sort of that was my history of gaming until, as I said, the PS1 played a lot of um Lomu and Shane Warren cricket. We used to get yeah. right into that. Command and Conquer. You, say Lomu, was you mean in Jonah Lomu rugby? Jonah Lomu rugby, yeah. yep. Um Command and Conquer was the first I played Command and Conquer when it first came out. My cousin had a had a mate that had a computer store, and when he closed the store at five pm, he had a back room that was uh, partitioned off into four sections, and we'd literally sit there all night from six pm until he opened the shop at eight am, playing the link and playing uh, um, uh, local um, skirmishes on the original Command and Conquer. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Yeah, and so I, and I started playing that on PS One, linking the the PS One cable the consoles up with the link cable. Me and my brother in law in the garage. My sister said that she used to wake up to feed the baby, and all she'd hear is "unit ready, building, 
Unit ready. Building. Unit ready. Building. <laughs> Arcades only uh, cost 20 cents over there? Sorry? Uh, they're only 20 cents? They, and... Well, they were when I was growing up. I, I, they're a lot more now. But when I was growing up, you could go and get no, a dollar's it... worth of uh, 20 cent pieces and yeah, play all day on a machine. Yeah, back in I have the day, a similar memory. I, at my high school, we had a land room set up for um, Counter Strike, and there would have been yeah. thirty computers set up in there. One side of the room was one team, the other side was one team, and we did that every lunchtime. And like, I took those moments for granted because you don't have things like that these days. It's all online gaming. Hundred percent. And the link, the link games that we used to have on uh, the PS One would just we had, had to have two TVs, you had to have two consoles, you had to have the link cable, you had to have two. Although with Command and Conquer, you um, thankfully they the the games to link to link play them. You only needed the one game because you had the oh, no. the Brotherhood and Nod and the GDI discs or the Soviet and and US discs. So, but you had to have two of everything to play. And we'd sit there and play for hours. And my brother-in-law would build these huge armies, and I'd sneak up on him and nuke all his men in one, and he'd get the shits and throw his controller down. <laughs> That's gold. Yeah. But... Going back to your PS3 collection, TJ. So you told us you sold it. Uh, do you have any regrets selling your PS3 collection? If you could have went back, would you have done things differently? Oh, the I kind of regret the when I sold it, um, but I kind of don't. Like I, I don't regret it because most of my the stuff that I loved um, went to collectors that I loved you know what I mean like I, they, at least it went to places that I knew would they appreciate it but I, I kind of wish I had a soul that like maybe now yeah <laughs> especially just... considering like at one stage I had like I had three copies of the 3d this Oz, Oz power 3d collection in my hand at once I had nine copies of Ra one at once I had um, multiple copies of the other 3D collections from around the world. You know, I had all these games that I was just like, no, I'm just going to help out the collectors. But if I had it now, I'd probably take a few weeks off. <laughs> Drop them on eBay. Yeah, yeah but I mean, back then, you know, um, yeah, Mark, they, yeah, Mark, he wanted that. I had an Aquanauts holiday. Um, I would have loved to have sent it to him, but. I think he was just there was it was the timing and he couldn't do it and then I got an offer off another collector and I, I messaged him and said hey Marky you know how about this and he's like yeah cool bro but yeah I, it's those sorts of things I would have rather done sort of send it to to Marky and and had it in his collection but you, you can't even remember the other guy's name so it's it's one hundred percent no yeah. no it was just a random. Uh, well, I, I won't say random in case he's watching, but I don't remember yeah, who it was. I completely yeah. know what you mean. Yeah. Um, it's like that, though. It's like, um, you know, you can always message me and I'll show you photos of the collection again, or you're always welcome to come visit and see it again. And it's always going to well, be... Well, you still, you still send me photos of... Um, like stuff that you learn about on the PS3, you'll see, he'll send me a photo and say, "Hey, look at this!" Fucking, you know, someone in someone in the group just found this game. It's like, oh. Most of the time, I look at it and I'm like, "Geez, I'm glad I'm out of it." But sometimes you're like, "Oh, that's interesting." A new slipcover, for example, you're always going to get those photos. Sorry. <laughs> a new slipcover, you'll always 100%, get. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I still get photos. I got a. I still get photos, not just from you. From Sean Black sends me random photos of a slipcover. That he'll find. There was one particular slip cover that he was looking for. I see we got our uh, Tinder Hot XYZs join us again. Shout yeah, out well. to Tinder Hot XYZ. Um, <laughs> every every stream they're here. Yeah, yeah they're, <laughs> they're, they're they're certainly dedicated. Um, I'll ring you after, baby. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sean, he said we were looking for a slip cover, the two of us, um, that we thought was a bit of a white whale that didn't exist and sean's like i remember him at the time saying i'm sure it exists because i'm sure i've seen it and i was like i don't think you have bro because now <laughs> and then randomly like six months 12 months later he sends me a, pic a picture and he's like i fucking told you <laughs> and i was like oh man so yeah i'll always get um 
photos, slip covers, because anyone that knew me back then knows that I was a slip cover freak. I, I just started going crazy on slips because they're so cool. I love them. I remember back when, um, like, Bayonetta was the rarest one to us, and now I've had two copies come through my hands of that. Yeah, yeah. And there's stuff out there that we're still seeing for the first time, and it's like... Yeah, actually, recently I finally got to see the um, the one that Nico's got, um, the Oz Powell slip cover that's mm, really rare. Uh, Are you guys talking about uh, Nicolo? No, I think is it a I can't remember, but there's one that it took, it took him ages. And for, I'll tell you something for Nico Webb to say that it's really hard to find, you can be sure that it's really hard to find because he's another guy that's got oh, an uncanny knack to find stuff. Steel books. You think you maybe the um, is it the uh, Naruto Knight? one? Well, there's a couple of them. I was thinking of Knight's Contract. Um, no, 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 not because I had that as well, but um, no, nah, there's one Bruce I can't two remember. was a pretty rare one. So Juice 2 wasn't... Collector's Edition just sold on Trade Me for over $200. I'm sure crazy. it might have been. And it wasn't a genuine um, slip cover. It was one of those ones that was like a, a – it was a slip cover, but it was a box that only had the game in it. Yeah, that that would have been a Dragon Ball Z or a Naruto one, definitely. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah but he t I remember him telling me about that when I was still collecting and he was after it. And then I recently went up and visited Nick. Um, yeah, and he showed me that, so – Finally got to see that in the flesh. Nice. There's Mikey. Hey, Mikey, how you going? TJ got me into collecting years ago. Got me bit by that bug and couldn't got out. Good times. And, yeah, definitely from the old PS3 days. Yeah, Mikey's the, uh, one of the old originals. Um, the, the Yeah, uh, we used to – I haven't talked to Mike for ages, but we used to – chat a lot about the PS3 library and interact and he was one of the guys that um actually he was <laughs> he was one of the guys that used to help out with shipping to he'd, he'd say you'd say oh I found this mic can you buy it for me and ship it over and he's like yeah yeah no worries and then he did that a few times for me and then um at one stage he said to me he's like you know what I'm fucking sick of staying in the line at the post office. I'm not doing it anymore. I love you, but I'm not doing it. I was like, all right, no worries. <laughs> That's understandable, though. 100%, yeah. 100%. I was like, dude, you've already done enough for me, so I completely understand. But, yeah, he was just, as only Mike can be, just totally and utterly brutally honest about it and said, I'm not standing in line at the post office for you anymore. I remember um, um, I used to be really bad at posting mail. I'd, I'd post mail like once every three or four months. <laughs> today, every day. Um, but I remember yeah. you being really bad at posting mail too. I was horrible at it. I was horrible. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. It always got sent out at the end. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But, I, I mean, we used to keep in touch and say, hey, I'm, I haven't sent it yet, you know. I'll get around to it. But I'm notorious yeah. for it. I've got a mate that I borrowed a, uh, a computer thing for a chip for the Jeep that I needed to program the computer Jeep, and he sent his down. And uh, maybe that was six months ago, and I've still got it. <laughs> so it's not it's not just for, it's not just video games that I'm notorious on slow shipping. Uh, so we asked you, TJ. How about you, Will? What's your favourite memory from collecting? Well, it's a PS3 memory, but it's not a collecting memory, as per se. Uh, I've told this story a couple times. I've never stole it in the chat. Um, my big game, was, it was a digital-only game, and what got me into the PS3 was uh, Gotham City Imposters. Basically a Call of Duty clone, but with Batman. And one team was the Batmans, or basically the guys dressed up like Batman. The other team was uh, the Jokers. Nice. And uh, yeah, and they just go shooting each other. But uh, at any rate, I started playing with this uh, uh, Supergirl, uh, Supergirl, some numbers or, any, or anyway. At any rate, uh, we played. We were playing for years and years, uh, well, a couple of years, and they started shutting it down. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, she became my girlfriend. Yeah, and uh, she, uh, I flew her down, and uh, I imported her from Kansas, and uh, we're uh, we've been together seven years now and uh we have a five-year-old child together and uh that's probably nice. my uh and that's my, that's my I, I, video games who knew so uh yeah i bagged my gamer girl online and uh yeah that's probably my favorite uh 
PS3 memory. But as far as trying to achieve that, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) gamer girl acquired. But uh, yeah, but uh, my uh, as far as collecting, you know, it's just those uh, those lucky pickups that you find, you know, and uh, the the stories are innumerable. You you find um, most recent memory was uh, finding two copies of El Chavo Cart from one purchase. And I got them for like twenty five bucks, uh, I think. And yeah, I, I my collection. I only keep stuff I want to play, and I, and uh, you know stuff I want to keep. I I didn't uh, I didn't hold on to those. Those were just immediate flips. But uh, just finding those in the wild. I mean, literally, it was I think it was a offer up, which is like a, a Gumtree or, or you know Craigslist. It's an app, but uh, finding the finding something like that in the wild is just uh, is remarkable. But uh, yeah. Those, that's probably my the, the the El Chavo pickups probably my fa- fondest pickup memory. What about you, Chingsy? What's your favorite um, pickup? Uh, I'll go with the PS3 memory. It wouldn't be a pickup, but um, I a couple of years ago went down to Brisbane and had the opportunity to stay at another collector's house, Grant. Uh, and he invited me into his house, into his game room. I think I spent a week there, uh, and it was amazing. Like not just a day like i spent an entire week going game hunting with grant meeting other collectors it's just one of those experiences that you know you couldn't pay to have an experience like that it was it's one of those things that we felt like we were friends for years we were different ages but we had the same hobbies and yeah it was just an amazing experience so um i think that would be my um best collecting moment there's actually a youtube video on my channel at his house. So if you want to check out Grant's game collection, you can find that over on the channel. Yeah, I've seen it. It's a, it's got, it's got, it's, but it's the one I'm thinking about. He collects everything, right? Yeah. And there's like CRTVs all the way through to LCDs and computers and Commodores. See, it's just amazing. Another, another memory I had of, um, that's one of my worst, but also one of my favorites was, um, I didn't tell anyone at the time, but I was, I was looking for a certain game for literally years. And I used to hang out on, uh, before Facebook, I used to hang out on forums, weird oh, I know internet what game forums. We're talking about. I'm going to go and find it. And this game, this particular game was considered non existent. We that No one even knew that it was actual actually released. They just saw, there weren't even photos of the game. There was like a, a, a blurry photo of, a, of the rear cover and. and <laughs> Uh, and then it became known that it was actually a real game, and um, and this is all on these really dark web forums that hardly anyone attended. And one day I was searching eBay, and one popped up for sale, and I nabbed it. And I showed the forum, and they were freaking out because they were like, "This is the first time we've ever seen a fo- a cu- an actual photo of the cover." And uh, we didn't know what was inside. We didn't know if it was a disc or a code. We had no idea and I put it on the Facebook group and I still remember the first um, the first comment was Ben and he said, if you show the game, Figsy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this. Yeah, that's it. And at the time, Ben said, GTHD, what have we been playing, SD? <laughs> I still remember he commented like that. <laughs> I'll tell you- I'll tell you something about Gran Turismo HD. That game was a fucking myth. No one knew that existed. And and this one random seller, it turns out, had a box from them from the original expo Convention. that they appeared, yeah. that they got given away. And um, and I found one, <laughs> and I was so happy because the journey I took to even find out that was a real game and the, the joy I had at finding out it was a real game and also... Uh, receiving that as a real game and no word of a lie within 24 hours fucking ben murbach got on the facebook group and said hey yo tj look what i've got <laughs> he had one and i was like what the hell oh it killed me inside, <laughs> it killed me inside. i couldn't believe it and then as it turns out there was um uh, this one guy in whatever country it was, he literally had a box hidden in his garage and he'd attended, I spoke to him and he attended the original um, expo that it was given away and he just kept them in a box and totally forgot about them and, and got one out to see what would happen. 
I snapped it up for I think I paid like ninety bucks, oh, for, and including shipping. So it was like one hundred and twenty bucks, and then he just released the Kraken basically, and and they just started popping up everywhere. And people, other people who had copies of it, didn't realize what it was. Started selling it, but I can tell you for a hundred percent actual fact that when on when I was on the forums, that game was a myth. It didn't exist. They didn't know what it was. There was no photos online about it. It was such an obscure, um, yeah. And when you say forums, you mean the Grand Turismo forums, correct? No, I mean video, random video okay. game forums. They weren't even strictly related to PS, to PlayStation or Sega. They were just random collecting forums, which is where I met um, a, a, a the guy that got me all my Ra One copies, Tans, and I met him there. And he's a he's a he was. I haven't spoken to him in years and years, but he was an extreme collector and had some random stuff that I've never seen before. But he never got involved in the scene. He just collected and stayed a ghost. But yeah, uh, I met him on there, on and like I remember that. showing him the copy of GT I had, and he was like, "Fucking hell, that does exist." You know what I mean? Like, literally, people online were saying, "Wow, I didn't, I hadn't." Finally, we've got confirmation that that game is an actual game. There was just no photos of it. It was one of my highlights of game, not because I found it, but because it was like, finally, I can share this with the community to say, hey, look, there is this actual game out there that exists. And I don't think it's as um, expensive or mega rare as what I'm going on about now, but it, that's... I like to think in part to me finding one and, and letting everyone know that, hey, look at is, this. There is, is this, this thing out there. Is this expo the only place it came from? Uh, the only place yeah, they, had a, yeah. a, they had a giveaway at a table at an expo, and it was it was a, uh, a gaming expo. It wasn't one of the big ones. It was a random one in Japan. They had a giveaway, and what it was, it was a, a demo of um, – it, it was what GT5 turned into. And it was like a demo to say, hey, this is the new game that's going to be coming out in HD on the PS3. Um, I believe the PS3 was released for a month when this came out. It was, like, really new. How it was yeah, so and 2006. It, it wasn't GTA 5. It was going to be a standalone title called Gran Turismo HD. No, no, no. Uh, it, yeah, it was, but it's what GT5 turned into. Yeah, the base exactly. of that game is GT5. So what this is, it includes one track, about 20 different cars. Uh, so this was available to download on the PSN store in 2006. It was free. Uh, so at one stage, there were people selling consoles with digital copies of this. Yeah, 100%. Um, but, yeah. yeah, the only way to get it today is physically is this copy. So it, essentially, it's a cancelled Gran Turismo game. Yeah, and I don't I could, it. correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think that the track that's on there is on G, made it to GT5. I could be wrong. Uh, but I, th I haven't played it because my copy's sealed, so I won't be cracking this one. Yeah. I, can't I actually ma I made a video of it and it got corrupted. I made a video similar to uh, one of the gameplay, but it got corrupted, so it never made it online. But I'm pretty sure that the track that is on there um, is also that's the only game that you can race in that track in HD. I can't remember the name of the track though, but. Yeah, it's something like that. But yeah, it was it was a Ahab white whale moment for me for sure. Yeah, well, but what's then, interesting about it? It's not your standard common game. It's Gran Turismo. It's like one of the biggest PlayStation franchises. It'd be like finding a Mario game on Nintendo that got cancelled. You know? It, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's why it it went to like three four hundred dollars once it was discovered. I remember that. Yeah. And then the price tanked because that one seller was selling them all on auction. And I think eventually copies were getting down to like $50. <laughs> yeah, that sort of stuff happens. I mean, it, it ebbs and flows. I mean, look at the uh, those two games that are the um, the most exy now, whatever they are. The, Angular and Siberia. Yeah, they, they weren't exy when I was collecting. They were... As as Ben said on his podcast, he had however many copies he had. He exactly. could have got me a dozen copies of them. They were not even near the top of the list when I was collecting. Yep. They weren't yeah. they weren't common shovelware, but you could buy them and you could buy them cheap. But they're uh, never gonna be the lost in the rains or the aquanaut holidays or anything like that. Yeah. TJ 
TJ, can you deny or confirm this? Uh, you're lucky, TJ. I've heard a lot of those guys had to sleep with him. Who's him? <laughs> Depends who he, he, who he, he, he is. I thought, I thought they're talking about you. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about the, the, I, I got, I'm guessing he's talking about the guy with the box of uh, H, GTHDs. Oh, yeah, well, well, I'll tell you something now. If it come down to that, I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's hardcore collecting right there. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> you don't do things in half measures in my world, right? <laughs> Anything to stop those sleepless nights. <laughs> exactly. That sort of shit will put me to sleep for sure. Uh, Mark was saying getting Africa in Africa for under five dollars is my best collecting memory. <laughs> that's kind of wrong. Hundred percent, because in Africa, I can't imagine. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. I can't imagine it'd be sort of super easy to find some titles over there no uh, and it, it's um, still expensive. I'm not sure how they get their games but i'm assuming it's a mixture of pal and north american titles like throughout asia where they don't really have a choice of what comes in it they sort of just get what they get yeah i'll tell you it's something about marky which makes him the greatest guy ever he was the first guy to post a video i remember we when on one of the themes i can't remember the theme but on one of the monthly themes we put up, everyone was like showing photos and stuff. And I don't know if you remember Figs or I don't know if you remember Mark, but Marky made a video of the of the monthly theme, and it was the first time that anyone in the group dared to show themselves, and 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 we're all like, that's the best thing ever. <laughs> he no, just I didn't give that. a shit, Mark. He was so cool. He just did not give a shit. Do you remember? Uh, that I remember picture? guys like um, Andrew Kim posting YouTube videos at the start of the group, and um, oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, different. It was his birthday. Like it was his birthday recently, actually. Happy birthday, Andy Kim. Yeah, I haven't spoken to Andrew in a long time. He's still on my friends. Uh, he's still one of my friends. I, I have no clue who you guys are talking about, so I'm just gonna say. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the OG PS3 YouTubers, I would say. Yeah, Andrew Kim was for sure. There was Andrew Kim and and obviously the two that have been alluded to in the past, which was um, Collector Fanatic, Fanatic and, uh, and... and um, uh, Young. Michael Young, that's it. Michael Young, yeah. But I, I forgot Andrew Kim put up. I mean, Andrew... Um, Kim. Kim put up uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, he, he done it a long time before I did. I mean, he those kept, that's why he kept his cool. he kept his um collection in a in a built in uh, wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I do remember about his videos, they're all in a fucking built in wardrobe, and he'd slide the doors open. So let's see what we've got today. <laughs> but it was always the quality over the quantity. You know, we watch the videos for the content, not for the production quality. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And I remember that, that when guys like that. Um, join the group it was super exciting to us because they were i don't want to sound like a corny douchebag but they were celebrities to us i remember the day that joe joined the group and we were all like whoa collector fanatics in the house (laughs) super excited because the guy was like a celebrity to us he's like fuck, he's a youtuber he's come to join (laughs) and then we we would just realize he's just a general everyday dude (laughs) Uh, good times (laughs) <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the uh the uh the celebrity uh the starstruck of of figsiness uh, has worn off for me a long time ago so yeah I know <laughs> well i was oh, lucky God. to know figsy before his celebrity um <laughs> exploded so <laughs> sega was saying did you guys see one of those siberia reprints ended up selling for 25 dollars and yeah i did oh. see that <laughs> i thought that was quite funny myself so uh, tell this... me, is there with well, just on that topic and on current collecting, is there are you able to tell the difference between those reprint reprints or are they you just can. totally taking the piss out of collectors? You can, and it, because THQ Nordic have actually changed companies, so the case is completely different. Um yeah, so there are very, very significant differences between the two. But to but the, the average general person, collector might get might get stung. Oh yeah, well yeah. a lot of a lot of people got stung in, in the beginning. Uh but yeah, the uh the publisher name is different. The back is a little a couple differences. There's no manuals, that's a big difference. But uh yeah, these guys were 
these guys yeah, weren't, weren't being up front with it and uh yeah, it's, it's it's a bad it's a bad move and a bad call and but uh, if you if you watch the live stream uh, of of this uh, whatnot uh, auction, the guy you could yeah. you could you could hear the shit hit the gut bottom of the guy's pants like when it got sold for twenty was twenty seven bucks. Like, yeah, 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 that was hilarious. And there's like, like a, oh. a moment on The Simpsons where Milhouse, uh, where Ralph's heart breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the slow motion heartbreak for sure. Yeah, because that the, sort the, of stuff like and and people like limited run and all that. If they had have stuck to, you know, I, I'm all for remaking, say, because I always wanted a, a physical copy of, um, uh, I'm not going to be able to think of the name now. The Will, you mentioned it a couple of podcasts ago. Um, it, was a, it was a digital PS3 game. Um, Pain? No, no, no. Uh, the had a movie, The Versus the World, or... Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. I always wanted a physical copy of that because they made that a digital game and then took it down. And it's yep, like, yeah. it's an awesome game. And I want to be able to play it. I don't want it for a physical release because it's just something to put on the collection. I want it because it's a cool game. And if, if LRG come out and say, we're making this game so people can play it, I'm all for that. But don't put a number on it and say, oh, look at that. But it's not a PS3 game. It's a PS4 game. But that's cool. I'd still I'd buy that on PS4 to play it. But what my point is with LRG, don't put a number on it of two thousand and say this is like limited run because you're going to get collectors. You're going to get bots buying five hundred copies and then upselling them on eBay. You're going to get collectors that aren't the best people in the world that are buying multiple copies, and it's just an invitation for shenanigans. And I never I knew that. That's what it was all. What it was going to turn into. I like the idea of limited run games, but I just didn't like their setup and the other company setup. Like, don't put a number on it. Just release yeah. it for everyone to play. Now these days, I'll have to give them credit. They don't release their games like that. It's now an open pre-order. Say so Scott Pilgrim, for example, you had twenty-eight days to pre-order this game, and there was they were making as many copies as were ordered. So games like that were good. But today, See? there's 20 games a month to order, so you can't keep up, you know. Like. Yeah, but I mean, that, but and I remember the, the early days of LRG when they were like, you had collectors out there that were buying them every month and building their collections, and it was like, it's just, why it's do that to the collectors? Just like, I like that idea, like, say, we're having an open pre order, however many get pre ordered, that's how many we're going to print, and then that's it, we're not reprinting really anymore. Then you can say, okay, cool. That it, there might only be three thousand printed, but at least they gave the community an opportunity to buy it. They didn't say, "Well, <laughs> we're only printing two thousand of these, and good luck when the website crashes two seconds after they go online." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. When that well, sort of stuff came thing. into collecting, I was just like, "What's what? It's just going in another direction. I don't want to be a part of." Well, you know, they, 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 so people see money there, you know. Uh, wait, people will buy these? People go climb over each other to grab one of these? Well, shit. And then the ex exploitation starts. It's always someone who's not and into Will, it. And, Will, that's what I was getting at. Like, back in the day, there wasn't that cutthroat, we need this game, we need this game, we need this game. It was like, oh, there's a new game. It's good to know it's out there. Let's share the information and stuff. And that's why I said I, I genuinely hope that the new – the new groups like your group and all that are still like that. Still, if they find a, uh, from what I hear, like uh, I, I know that they talked about a guy that's right into variants and he shares the knowledge yeah. if he finds a new variant and all that sort of stuff. That's the sort of stuff that I enjoyed when I was um, collecting, just the sharing of the knowledge and helping each other out and learning about the library, that sort of stuff. And to me, I don't even think that sort of stuff exists with PS4 or PS5. It's, it's just different, isn't it? I could be wrong, like it's just a different. Uh, you're not wrong though. The PS4 library is almost too overwhelming for someone to even do that. Right. Like, what are they up to? Now? Well over three thousand games. So yeah, that's like fun. bigger than the PS2. Yeah, and it's not finished yet. Like it, there's over five hundred limited run games for one. Oh that's Jesus! Really Jesus Christ! Like the limited run PS4 set's going to be bigger than some entire game libraries. Yeah, you know, uh, I. I... Getting back to your uh, subject of camaraderie, uh, within my group, I do have a tight-knit 
set of friends who I speak to, you know, and I keep close with, I keep chats with outside of the actual group itself. And, you know, I'd like to think there are other groups of Pete friends out there uh, in, within my group. And, uh, yeah, I'll never know that I'm not in that circle, but yeah, I got, I got certain people that uh, I keep close and uh, trade with. And uh, it's not, uh, it's not as big or as uh, popular as yours were. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's good though. Like our, our core base of collectors wasn't huge. Even when I remember Penny in the group now, Fix. That's probably 3,000, 2,000. I couldn't right. even tell you. I don't Yeah, really I remember when that. it hit. I think I was still there when it hit 1,000. But honestly, the core group of collectors was still only 40 or 50 that were, you know, right into it. And that's not a slight on the rest of the collectors that came later. It was just even when it got really high, there was still that core group that maintained the um, – mantra of whatever we were doing in the group you know help out before build your collection i suppose we never really had a motto but if we did that'd be it am i right yeah and it was almost hard if like you know an, an aussie came in the group and was like hey i want all these games too i was like well we've already traded all these deals and you know your best bet's to find someone who hasn't got these games because they're more willing to help you um like, Will, you were saying before that you used to go and get games for people and you kind of got sick of that. Um, <laughs> I like to think of the best way to that for, to work would be they're also getting you games. So there's that positive feedback loop. Like you're not just getting games, you're getting games for games that you want. Uh, so that I find like they're the best type of trade. So TJ, like, um, you know, how John's still sending you games, you know, like, it probably doesn't mean as much today where he used to help you get stuff would have. Well, but, but that's that, but exactly the point. And John does, I send um, Jeep, diecast exactly. Jeeps to him. So there's still that, that give and take and helping each other out. And you're a hundred percent right. Like the, if, if a new collector said to me where, you know, oh, I'm after this or I'm after that, Figs is right. Find people that are after stuff as well. And build a relationship and, and make it fun so that you're receiving and you're giving at the same time because that was what the fun aspect of the old days was all about, the fact that I'm not only helping you but I'm getting this thing in return and we're all family, you know. And, and that's what 100%, that's what new collectors should be doing is instead of seeing the, the big guys like Figs and saying, I need that rare game, go and meet other people and say let's help each other and, and you know, um, uh, network with each other. You're right. And, yeah. and like today, if someone reaches out to me, I'm most likely not going to trade with them because I've already got a full set. I'm going to sell them to them. Well, that's not as fun. Like it's you want to be trading with people in the same position as you and different things. And that's like that. and that's not an arrogant thing. That's just figs are saying, well, I've got the collection. There's nothing I can get out of it. You know, 100%. I can't get enjoyment out of trading with people because I'm there's absolutely nothing that you can give me that. I almost already don't have. And yep. the the honest, the brutally honest advice you give is go and meet people. Do what we did. Go, it's not too late to do that shit in the in the collecting world. Go and meet friends and and start, you know, messenger um, uh, group chats together and, and learn about the library that way instead of just seeing the old school guys that have got these huge collections because they're the, the, the people like the ones off the top of my head like Figs, Kev, uh, Benny Murbach, um, Sebastian. Uh, well, those sorts of guys, they're, they're burnt out from collecting. They've got everything they want. They're not interested in learning anything because they know almost everything. They're not know it alls, but they know almost everything. Go and find someone that's new to the group and say, if someone joins a group and says, oh, I'm new to collecting, you know, jump on it because their, their enthusiasm is going to be incredibly. Um, Infectious. Uh, intoxicating. You know, you want that enthusiasm to give you enthusiasm. 100%. There's, there'd be people out there today that are going to turn into some of the biggest PS3 collectors in the world that wouldn't even ha own a PS3 game because we don't know what's going to ha happen in the future. So you're 100%, 100% because it happened with PS1 and PS2. There's some of the biggest collectors out there that weren't collecting when years after PS1 or PS2 was 
those started their collections four or five years ago and they're slowly building and they've got the money to do it and they've got the contacts. And to me, the collecting, if, if it's not fun, you're out because that's when I, and, and I'm, and I'm speaking from um, my experience because that's when I got out of collecting when it didn't become fun anymore, when I wasn't learning enough and it become a bit of a drag to sort of say, yeah, I can help you get that. You're not really going to get me anything, but yeah, I'll do that for you. But back in the day when someone said, hey, I've got this game and I can, that was fun, man. That made it exciting. And, and that's still possible today. I know there was one guy in the chat that um, mentioned, you know, oh, I'm new to PS3 collecting. Go on, on you know, Will's group or, or Fix's group, start your own group called, you know, Brand New PS3 Collectors. You'll get from, people from joining the it. YouTube video out there, you know. So I'm looking for these games. I've got games to trade. Work out. Yeah, I'm looking you, to meet. I'm not. Not even. I'm looking to trade. So I'm looking to meet fellow, you know, enthusiastic PS3 collectors. I want to meet friends that can love the PS3 as much as I do. You'll get new people coming out and say, "Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm I've just started collecting," and you start chatting with them and you start learning shit that you don't learn from Figsy's videos or you know Will's groups or anything like that. You, you learn it yourself and it becomes exciting and it becomes a, a, a you know the best way to learn is not through just watching videos. I mean, you just network because the best thing about that is you don't only build a, a collection, you build a friendship. And that's way more important to me than building a collection. You know, 100%. I couldn't give well, a shit like about my collection. If, if, if someone said you, you go back in time and you, I'll, I'll give you every single PS3 game all in one hit like that. But you're not going to meet anyone. I'd be like, whatever. I don't want the full collection if I'm going to miss out on meeting all those people, you know, and all those memories. I'd rather well, have right. every game. I've got some memory. Exactly. But what I like about the PS3 is it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You could be watching this from America, and then you've got all the American exclusives that a collector in the UK would want. You could be watching this in Sweden. There's a bunch of Swedish exclusives that someone in Australia want. If you're in Australia. There's AFL games, there's rugby games, there's SingStar games. It doesn't matter what country you're in. You could be in Japan. There's going to be something that someone else in a different region will want, and then there's going to be exclusives in that region that you want. So go and get those common games that might be common to you because to someone else, that's what they're looking for. They don't want to pay extraordinary prices on eBay. you know. And, and there are those people out there because when we first started learning about people in in um, Poland and Brazil and like we knew okay there's collectors in America and there's collectors in the UK but when we start started hearing about you know Poland and South Africa and and Brazil and Indonesia and all that that shit was like I never knew people like I mean it was probably ignorant on my part but I was just like I never knew there were people in Brazil that were collecting PS3 games but fuck me dead if I didn't find out that I'd never met Louis and one of the greatest human beings that's ever existed in all of eternity, in my eyes. Louis's one of the best. Yeah, he's awesome. Fucking fuck yeah, Louis. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, he's not, well, he's like, I don't know any of these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, you got, yeah, this is a big trip down uh, memory lane for you guys, and I'm just sitting here. It, like, I, I, pol <laughs> I apologize to you guys, but hopefully they're finding it entertaining. But it is a, a trip down memory lane um, because it, it was such a good time. Uh, in my life as far as not just collecting but other st other personal stuff as well and it just brings back memories of that particular period in my life which is awesome. 100%. I don't look at my PS3 games like I look at some of my other collection because the PS3 had such a journey that I went on like you know more than 50% of these games were from collectors were from trades. Yeah. Once a week it was I got these games from this country. I, I used to post a flag next to someone's name and yeah. it was always a different flag next to people's names. And um, I'm going to do a full video soon where I go back and show every single post I got from different people in the PS3 group. It's going to go around long. the world. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. How many yeah, people in your perfect. group, Will? Uh, 8,000 at last count. Jeez. We, we, we kind of cheated. We, I, I have a PS2 group called PS2 Ain't Dead, and it, it was 36,000 at the time. And then uh, we decided, hey, let's branch out and make a Ain't Dead group for every console. And uh, we just basically 
you know, grab uh, all our members came from the first group PS2. So it was really easy. I mean, we had a, we had a thousand really quick. And uh, after what, that, what, what percentage of that is, would you call active, passionate collectors? Uh, I'd say about, uh, active, hmm. Pretty it's, small. It, 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 no, it comes in waves. Uh, yeah, right. you, you'll you'll get you'll get a bunch of new people posting new stuff that they got in, and it's you see like the same six people, and then a new set of six people come in. But you know, people are always coming back and posting. So, I'd say hardcore maybe two hundred, right. hundred fifty. Yeah. Uh, that's a good I'm, number though, and and that's um a, a, that's a good network and a good group of friends and a, a good way and. They're the sorts of people. If they're still passionate about it, then I just say that the, um, the yeah, new collectors—they're the ones you latch onto that are still building the collections. I not mean, the the, the group size, not, not the uh, what I'd call the uh, casuals, the uh, Olympians of uh, of PS3 collecting. I got a full set. I haven't picked anything up in the two ones. Years. That, the ones that sit up there in Olympia and look down on yeah. us plebs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't posted anything. When I first started, when or when the PS3 group was still young, and I was posting every week, you know, every it it I liked it, you know, I I, I get a I get a buzz off the likes. I get I'd enjoy reading the comments. I'd talk back with everybody. It's uh, it's cycling down for me on the PS3, but uh, I'm trying to ramp it up on my PS4, and uh, okay. you know, I'm in that weird uh, transitionary phase. So I'm I'm letting go a little little parts of the ps3 collection to to uh what's uh, fund finance the, the fi yeah, fund the finance the next collection mm. uh, chaos is looking for the afl games for the ps4 feel free to reach out to me chaos and i can help you with those well i have how many games on the how many afl games on the ps4 i know there's two but then i think there's like game of the year edition and oh okay grand have final you, edition have you played them? things like that no, there's not. A, there's a um, there's a. Uh, his, I was just I was just about to mention Chibi. Um, <laughs> speaking sure. of AFL games, there's a video online of of uh, Shawnee scoring. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a thousand go goals in a, in a match on um, on one of the old <laughs> AFL games, <laughs> and it's got like so many ridiculous thousand views. <laughs> And there's people out, and there's people in the comments on the video accusing him of cheating and shit. It's so funny. I remember doing that on the rugby league game back in the year, scoring like 400 points or something. Yeah, yeah 400 long. goals, but yeah, it was just like 100, 100 goals a quarter. And you read if you if you go and look at it, read the comments because it's hilarious. People out there just getting salty about it and accusing him of, of um, cheating and hacking the game. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Hey, Figsy, uh, did, one problem I have in my group, uh, and I don't know, maybe you experienced this in, when you are in running things over there. Did you guys get a lot of uh, console modders trying to post uh, this, that, and the other about, you know, custom firmware and hen and all their hacked games and whatnot? Because that's a big issue in my group right now. Always got yeah, I think we did, but we also had strict criteria to get into the group. So um, we we, we were back in the day. It was very strict on what you could post in the group because, as I said, I, I was only interested. I was selfish with the as far as the content goes because I, I wasn't interested in selling games. There was no selling on the group, no buying yeah. on the group. You could you could connect with each other off the group and trade all you want, but there was no advertising for games. It was literally just a place to learn about the library, meet new people, um, interact with fellow fanatics on the group. I know that there's one, uh, there was one member that had, um, that used to sell modded games, consoles, uh, mm. but he, he respected the rules. Now, I know, I know he did that because I bought one off him, which is uh, <laughs> actually, um, FYI, he, there it is, um, there is one that's connected to the kiosk that I'm selling. So, so um, shout right. out to Shawnee M. <laughs> yeah. so you got uh, Shawnee as well. So, What's funny that? enough, I bought a um, a collector's edition off Sean that he bought off Kieran. So, um, he was I'll a good he, he, he was a good guy for um, helping you out, and and he was one of the early sellers that um there was a really good uh contact to find stuff that you needed he'd go out of his way to go around the local plate shops and that to find if you if you needed anything 
yeah, Sean was a good, is a good guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> AFL games are so bad, you just have to collect them. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Sean was saying I was farming the 5,000 goals trophy to be the first in the world to fight me. <laughs> That's an effort. It's one of my favourite videos on, on the entire network of YouTube is that video because you just read the comments and they're just, they're so salty about it. They're just, uh, you know, just fully accusing him of cheating and he's just good at the game. It's <laughs> uh, hilarious. Oh, yeah, he, he's... Uh, He's got the same sense of humour as me, so we used to get along famously, <laughs> which is bizarre to say the least. Uh, hats off to his trophy hunting. I know Sean does some crazy stuff with um, some beta games and games that um, the servers are turning off. He'll get the trophies before they turn the servers off and things like that. Yeah, he's got that one on the ATV game where he got a trophy and he got the... Um, I think it's the Aussie skin for one of the motorbikes before they turned the server off. And he had to put it online because people weren't believing him that it was you could get it. And he was like, he said, put this video up. And it's like, yet again, Sean's gone out there to prove everyone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he did so it. many times on us in the PS3, PS3 PAL group. <laughs> I sent him a couple of um, codes last week because he was trying to get the dirt-free platinum before the, they turn the servers off oh and, man yeah yeah never to send him the codes but they might all be expired so um... right one of the big uh one of the big um trophy collectors was dave Subaru over it in yep. the uk oh yeah hard well he had thousands of platinums he was but he was a good gamer he was just a skilled gamer and i remember having a, a video session with him where we were playing a um a game like ferrari challenge or some random racing game and we were video calling each other because he was trying to show me how to beat this time to get a trophy on the, on this track. And he was doing it with such ease and eventually I rage quit and I was like, fuck it, I'm over it. <laughs> but he made it look so easy. I remember when he did the Gran Turismo Sport trophy and it was literally like 500 hours or something and he ended yeah, up getting it. He's just, just a really good gamer, just a skilled gamer yeah. that can run through any game and just get every trophy. I can't do that. Yeah, he had an insane ability to rack up platinums. What about Will? Do you do trophy hunting at all? No, I don't care. <laughs> no, uh, trying to think. I, the last game I tro uh, the last game I got a platinum on was a PS4 game. It was a uh, hentai versus evil. It, it took it took it's one of those games that you, you get a trophy in like fifteen all of fifteen minutes. But no, I'm not a trophy hunter. I remember someone. You guys had that collector spotlight in your group when I right around when I first joined, and uh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and well, uh, one of the questions was how many or how, I, I get the, some some PS3 score that's attached to how many trophies you got, and mine was embarrassingly low. So no, it's because uh, I just when I play a game, I play it to death, and I just really I'm not playing like I'm not one who plays like six games, different games a month. I play one, two, three games a year. And I just play them, play them over and over and over and over again. But that's that's how I that's how I rock it. And have you so, guys played um, Deadpool? I haven't uh, actually played it. No. Oh, Deadpool, Deadpool done the best thing ever because um, a lot of trophy hunters are notorious for going through. They used to go through the uh, trophy website and see the difficulty and go through the guides and all that, and they wouldn't go for a game that was too too hard or something or shit like that and um and they used to get upset that they'd have like 40 percent on their trophy list and shit like that and deadpool gives you a trophy the, the instant you start it up <laughs> and the trophy's name's like now you've got to go all the way or some shit <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good uh, there's a thing so you can if you've got zero percent you can delete the trophies off your list. But zero percent, but yeah. You can't. So when when you load up Deadpool and it gives you the trophy just for loading and it's called something like now you've got to go all the way. It's like oh, that's it's cool. like a total finger to the um, hardcore uh, trophy collectors. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, their entire group's dedicated to that as well. That's another yeah, 100%. Another, another aspect. I mean. It's the nice thing about the PS3. It's not just the video games, or because that's one part of it. And you got the hardware. Uh, you, your your picture was quite impressive. You got the uh, you got the trophy hunters. 
you got the uh, the the crazy modders. Uh, yeah, and and of course the digital games, which are disappearing quickly. But uh, it's it's not just a, a one trick pony, really. That's that's what I like most about the PS3. I think it's uh, yeah, it's one of the best consoles for sure. And how does this feel free it's... to play online? How crazy yeah. is that? What do you think about what do you think about where gaming's going now? Like when I was getting out of out of PS3 and getting out of gaming, there was those the big uh, talk about gaming going digital only and no physical release. But it, it seems like it, that's like not even close to happening. Like it seems to me like. PS4 and PS5 are still just like throwing out physical game after physical game. Do you think that's an inevitability? I think there's a bit of both. There's 10 times more people playing games today than in 2010. So they would sell more physical games than ever before, way more digital games than ever before. You've got more people playing on console. You've got like the Steam Deck. Um, I know there was another console that just died. It was um, Google Stadia. You've got, you know, the Switch, people are playing Xbox these days. You've got Game Pass for PC. So there's so many different ways to play. Like Netflix have got games on them these days. Um, hardcore, there's hardcore mobile gamers these days. Like there's a hardcore mobile game scene to the point where they have esports for mobile games these days. Yeah. And you, it, it, you know what? One of the most annoying aspects of my life is you get on facebook and there's just ad after ad of fucking mobile games dudes going i've got this and, I've... and you try to block them and then a new one comes in and then you block it and a new one comes in and you're just like fuck you facebook i'm out i'm gone i don't need well, to up, guys this podcast is sponsored by rage shadow legends <laughs> <laughs> shout out to rage the only game that i'm not upset with <laughs> the only one one day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's legit the only game that I love playing. Oh, yeah. I was uh, I was hooked into. Uh, let me see. I played Clash of Clans for a minute. That was uh, and then it, then it started becoming a chore. Oh shit! I gotta go do. Put a loop, put a loop. I gotta collect all that bullshit. And uh, then I started playing. What was it? Star Wars Legends of Heroes. Same shit. You, know, you just gotta you gotta check in. They make you check in and get on to collect this and get the freebies for that. It's just a pain in the ass. Uh, so I mean, I I prefer a game I could just sit down and play and then walk away from and not have to be a slave you guys to ever it. Join in our now sniper silent deadly invisible Sunday sessions. I joined uh, one, but there was a problem with my um, connection or something, and I couldn't get in. And then yeah. I was doing a job where um, I just wasn't available Sundays. But I remember when we started first talking about starting something like that up. I, yeah. I think I've participated like five times i've almost got all the trophies in this game just from playing online with different collectors so um, yeah i'd forgotten about that yeah yeah we'll have to get some games going again in the future maybe after a sunday podcast or something everyone who owns a copy jumps online and if the servers are still up we'll all play can you would you be able to stream that yeah i'm sure we can i streamed it last time yeah that'd be fun that's what you should do like start streaming some old school ps3 games with like for, like former and current collectors and having a chat about stuff and that'd be good. It's it's actually just getting back to those um, uh, mobile games. It's kind of weird that I'm not into them because one of my favourite great games um, grow, uh, was uh, Sim Sim Tower, and that's yep. or that's where I I reckon that's where mobile games yeah birthed from. And I played games like Command and Conquer and Age of Empires and. Sim City and Sim Tower, but I just look at those mobile games. And I just think they're just. I agree. Um, did you ever play Flash games back in like the early two thousands? No. See, when I was at school, I'm twenty nine, so this is like two thousand and five to two thousand and ten. All our PC were full of these Flash games. Fast forward ten years, all these Flash games are now like Roblox and all these mobile games. I'm like, this yeah, is the right. same thing I was playing twenty years ago. <laughs> Did, did you ever just play those? Did you guys ever play The Sims and stuff like that? Sim Tower and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I sent the uh, I sent the intro tune to Sim Tower to my brother-in-law recently, and we just laughed our heads off because it just reminded us of I lived out with him at the time we were playing, and we were just like hooked on that game for hours and hours. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, AJ just mentioned Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies. I'm sure we could get some old zombies going again. That'd be fun. Yeah, that's like 
I don't think people play that sort of stuff anymore, do they? We like, not like they used to. Not on PS3. They might play the PS4 version, you know, but no, no one. No. Trust me, there's a there's a, still a big falling for that uh, online for PS3 online. I'm always seeing posts about it. Hey, I'm looking for people to play with. I'm looking for. We we had so many people saying, "I'm looking for people to play with uh, this game, Black Ops." Bup, 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 that I I started deleting all of them, and I just said, "Look, here's here's one pinned post. If you want to find somebody, go in here, scroll around. There's like 700 different people who put up their uh, their uh, I guess gamer tag is the best way to call it, so they could find each other." I reckon you need to have a rule though if you if you're going to do a, a live stream with Black Ops, no one under 13. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think we have anyone that young. No one under eighteen, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> just say you were saying a Warhawk stream. Unfortunately, I don't think the servers up on that anymore. Servers are shut down. So that's yeah, the... I think they shut down when I was still collecting. That's, the, the, I don't think the servers he, lasted that long for that game. It's a great game. Has, there's a there's a uh, what's it called? Uh, there's a thing called PS One. They they run running their own server for that, for Warhawk, so you can't play it now if you want. Yeah. You go find them. Uh, what's that service called? The one that uh, you're doing the giveaway on? Uh, yeah, they got their, they got their Discord channel. You get in there, you hook up the uh, PSONE. Uh, that's the name of the uh, of the guys, and they, they're they they're bringing back PS3 servers, so you can go in there and see what the game of the week is that they're bringing back a server for and jump in. And that's nice. how you play Demon Souls on PS3 because they shut the service down and then the community made their own. So we can yeah. still keep playing. It's great. Yeah, that oh. Warhawk's a really, really good game too. It's a highly underrated game. How about this? Uh, I'm going to pull one out. He's going to pull. He's going to pull it out, TJ. He's going to pull it out. Yeah, get rid of the screenshot. <laughs> I want to play this. <laughs> oh, man. This is an online game with 256 players, and I've never played it. And every <laughs> single person who played this says it was amazing. Yes, Joseph's talking about it in chat. They need to bring back Mag. <laughs> I'm not familiar with it. This yeah, is like the original that... Battle Royale. Yeah, and I don't think that server lasted all that long either. I could no, be I wrong, but believe it was up for less than two years. But yeah. people absolutely loved it. Uh, look up YouTube videos on Mag, and there's so like it looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I'm gonna have to cut out. Uh, I got to, I got things. I gotta go be a dad. So uh, I'm gonna say goodbye and good night, TJ. It was uh, great having you on. Yeah, thanks, I, Will. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't get ninety percent of the references you were making, but uh, you seem very enthusiastic about it. And uh, if you're, if you're excited, hope that that shit's contagious, and uh, hopefully our, our viewers liked it. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Figsy, thanks for having me. Hey, no problem, Figsy. Good night. I'll see uh, you Sunday, Will, for the next yes. podcast. Who's Who's our next guest? By the way, I'd have to look at my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a second. No. <laughs> And uh, good night to everybody in the chat. Uh, can I can I just give? I just want to give a shout out before I go. Oh yeah, of course. It's it's, it's I told Figs that it reads a bit like a acceptance speech for an Academy Award, <laughs> but I just want to give a shout out to a few of the old school guys, if you don't mind. So Arzang, over in Canada, brother. One of these days, me and you are gonna hit hard a dirty little off road track for sure. Um, Justin, Miguel, and Joel in the States. Ted Erickson, one of the funniest guys I've never met. Mike Higgins, legit the actual god of war. Uh, Benny, Murbach, me and you are the Bengals Chiefs game, brother. Uh, good times. Joe Cromie, the OG Y2, YT collector. Uh, me, you, we're going to get smashed by Pebble Beach 100%. South America, Louis, the golden boy and probably the nicest guy in history. I love you. Marky, stay awesome, brother. Um, UK, Dave, John, Kev and Daz. And uh, I generally hope Daz is all right because no one... Yeah, me too. Uh, I haven't heard from Daz for a few Yeah, years. Daz has kind of disappeared, but I'm sure he's off being crazy like he always was. Um, in Europe, Jotaro, Ronnie, Luca and Bly. And especially Kuba, Emil and Nicolo, my brothers from another mother. Uh, India, Rahul. 
and my old, old, old school uh, legend collector, Tenzin, and in Australia, Evan, Chris, Ben, Matt Murphy, Kieran, Jimmy Dean Wilson, Nico Webb, and the two Shawns, Shawnee M and Shawnee B. Uh, I'll start it and you guys finish it. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> because everyone and everyone around the world think we just we Aussies just walk down the street and see another Aussie and go, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Um, I mean, yeah, sometimes it happens. <laughs> thanks for having me, lads. And I just want to say that to all the guys I mentioned and everyone that was involved in the collective group, uh, I love you. I miss you all. And whatever you are doing these days, I hope it's with a smile on your face and I hope that you're as happy as you are now as you were back in the collector days. So thanks for having me. Good night, everybody. And stay everybody. tuned for Sunday, guys. We've got James Johnson on. Uh, James has got a full Vita, a uh, full PSP set, a full PS3 set. He's going nice. for a full PS5 set, so it should be pretty interesting. Uh, again, thanks for coming on, TJ. It was really good to chat to you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good night. And everybody. until next time, guys, peace. Yep. Please.